We call it the Forgotten Park. They just don't realise it's here. One reason being that this was a bowling green originally, so there was no access from here through to there. One of the things we were looking at initially was Sturchley's lost property, so any empty spaces and empty buildings which could be to better use. So one of the um, spaces that came to our attention at that point was um, Sturchley Park. We wanted to make it the focus of some kind of project or activity um, because we thought it needed to be better used. Yeah. And also we've met quite a lot of other people, just individuals that we, we recognise as sort of scattered around Sturchley who had an interest in it, knew about it and had some sense of commitment to it but it isn't really widely well known of in the area and so there seemed to be something that needed to be done about making those connections. We come through, we ride our bikes through and things like that but we, it's just waste ground almost. The park's just been vandalised and destroyed and I guess for a long time no one's cared about it. Well, we've been here for around about 10 years um, and have always sort of uh, prided ourselves on backing onto a nice parkland area. It has its ups and its downs. I mean, it's up, it's great because in the height of summer, it's really nice to look out and have the trees. The trouble is because to have sort of groups uh, of young people either sort of um, drinking and or being, uh, having antisocial behaviour, uh, that is at its worst. Uh, but overall, it's, um, it's a nice place to have. The plan today was to introduce the three sort of sessions that we're, that we're doing and to focus on the entrances to begin with because this is such a hidden part. We wanted to know if people felt it was important um, to highlight the entrances and then to ask people a little bit about what they would bring to the park in terms of activity and what object or visual device could we use um, to make that apparent to people. The small change approach and our approach is quite similar. We need to work with the community for our own kind of working process, but it makes things more sustainable if we can involve people and they can then take over sort of custodians. Yeah, there's no signpost as far as I know to the park, which is why we didn't know where it was, <laughs> which is quite a key thing really. If, if no one knows where it is, then it's not going to get used and it's not going to get appreciated. I'd like to see some benches. Maybe not particularly picnic tables. Possibly some swings or something for children. Some play equipment, which would be perfect because it's a lovely little park. I think just showing people that it's here, maybe a bench or something like that. Um, the graffiti wall is like a, a fine idea, you know. Get people using it for some positive purpose. So just small changes, just to encourage people to walk into the park, I think that would be amazing. I think one of the most interesting discussions was about working with that graffiti and not trying to remove it but trying to work with it and they wanted to have a dialogue. So we got in touch with um, a graffiti artist, he imparted his thoughts really and we were able to take those which were about the quality of the graffiti and it's so bad because there isn't enough time to do it so if there's more time, if it's a legal space then the quality is much higher and it becomes a totally different thing and possibly not as threatening and we, you can involve more people. And then there were some more things about just using it and you know, the fact that there was nowhere to sit and having other activity there that would be more positive. So it was about trying to turn that round, which we took through, as Jane said, and in the final event presented those ideas in a highly visual way. So the red carpet um, at the entrances and the puncturing through the building. And I think people felt that it just did demonstrate by, by doing it in the place, it demonstrated what change felt like rather than just imagining what it could be like. They certainly raised the profile of the park. We had so many people have said, I didn't realise it was here, hence the reason it's a forgotten park. And I think they've done amazing. I mean, I, I wouldn't have thought of half of what they've done, but it really is very good. I think one of the things that we found when we were there doing it, that the people that were really unhappy about the park and what had happened to its decline were stuck in being very unhappy about it and couldn't really believe that anything that we did would change it and that the council really wasn't that bothered about it. And I suppose in the longer term, you'd have to get over that to try and change people's attitude to it.